Hello, everybody. My name is Printed Box Dale, and I hope that you have you enjoying this YouTube channel. Will you please hit the subscribe and like button? And y'all are going to have a hallelujah good time, but we got many more to come. And let's have a good time together. The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming and he riding on his cloud of chariot. This lesson we're getting ready to talk about is about the Lord church. The Lord is coming back for a church and he's taking church back home with him on his cloud of chariot. And we pray that as we go through this lesson that you will get your Bible and you will get your notepad and study along with us as we work here at the Church of Christ of Eastside, trying to save as many souls as we can. Y'all, the Lord is coming, and he riding on his clouds of chariot. Are you ready to go and meet the Lord? My friend, let us go to the Heavenly Father in prayer. Our gracious and Heavenly Father, the creator of both heaven and earth. Lord, we pray that as we go through this lesson, that this lesson will touch somebody's hearts and minds. will cause them to come into your church and obey your word before you everlasting into eternity too late. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus, mercy everlasting, glorious name. Amen. I just want to say hello to each one of you. My name is Brother Prentice Barksdale Senior, and yes, I am a member here at the Church of Christ at Eastside, 2518 
Galvin Road. We here in this congregation, we are trying to do all that we can do to cause many souls to come to Christ before that last trumpet should sound. We're living today in a time of this world that man is doing everything underneath the sun. Men going into all kinds of churches and saying that we are serving the Lord. But I want you to know today that the Lord is coming and he is riding on his cloud of chariot. And when the Lord comes, he's coming back for his church, the one that he died for and gave his life for on the cross of Calvary. He's not coming for, for uh, no other church. He's coming for his church, the church of Christ. Jesus is coming back for his church. And as we get ready to uh, get into this lesson that the Lord is coming for his church. And if you don't mind, will you open your Bible over here to the book of the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12. That's the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12. That's the book of Acts, chapter 4, there in verse number 12. Uh, and before we read this, I want you to get yourself together because the Lord is coming and he's coming back for his church. Now some of you might not be used to reading your Bible. Some of you all might not, can't find the scriptures in the Bible because you have never read the scriptures before. You had never, you might have looked at the Bible, but in trying to find the scriptures in the Bible. So we want to try to take our time for the few minutes that we have together to try to encourage you to study the word of God and hoping that when we do this lesson that it will cause somebody to come out of the way of sin and obey Christ before he come riding on his cloud of chariot. Because when he come, time, time on this earth will be no more. Only you is the one that's going to have to decide, are you ready to obey the Lord or to do what he tells us to do? The Lord is coming. And he is riding on this cloud of chariot. Oh, what a day that will be when the Lord will come. So the question is going to be, are you ready? Are you ready for the Lord to come? Now, if you're not ready, and, have, and you have not obeyed his word, you're going to be in trouble when he come. When he come riding on the sweet cloud of charity heart, you're going to be in trouble when he come. My friend, we find in this day and time that men's everywhere is taking our life, doing everything underneath the sun. Now again, if you're not used to, used, used to read, using your Bible, in your Bible, uh, you have a calendar or a glossary. It might be in the front of your Bible or it might be in the back of your Bible. You can go back in there and you can find the Old and New Testament. We're going to be dealing with this scripture in Acts 4 12. It's in the New Testament. So look in the book in the New Testament and find the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12. And let me tell you this, my friend. Uh, Make sure that when you listen to this lesson, stop this DVD and find the scripture and read along with us because it is your soul and salvation, the one that is important. If you are ready to change your life and you are ready to do what the Lord said do, then it's going to be totally left up to you to pick up your Bible and read along with us. And before we get into this lesson, let me say this in the beginning, just in case I don't get to it in the end. That if, why don't you listen to this lesson? If it's something to help you, write us here at the Church of Christ at 2518 Gallon Road here in Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. 
and let us know how was this lesson to you? Did it help you to begin to understand the scripture? Or if you decide to obey Christ and put Christ on the water of baptism and make sure you find the Church of Christ in the location that where you at, call them up and someone will come and take you to the Lord Church and baptize you into the Church of Christ. Now we're saying that the Lord is coming and he's coming back for his church. And his church is the only one that wear his name. His church is the only one that carry his doctrine. We find it in the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12. The Bible tells us this, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now the Bible told us here in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, and if you want to do what the Lord asks you to do, uh, the Bible tells us over here, if my memory is right, Matthew 11, 28, and 29, I believe we'll turn there and make sure we got the, the scriptures right. That my memory should be right. Remember, we just got through seeing that the Bible said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So if you want to be saved, if you want to be saved, you got to go where his name is. Because he said, neither is there salvation in any other. So if you want the salvation of Christ, you got to come where he put his saving power in. Why? Because he done told us in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other. Now, see, the Lord church is right. The church of Christ is right. The Bible told us over here in the book of Acts, it says, Take heed unto yourself and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseal to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Christ purchased this church with his blood. This church, the one that's going to wear his name, it will purchase by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why we're going to look here in the book of, book, book of Matthew. The book of Matthew. Now remember, put this DVD on pause and find the scripture and read the Bible with us. Please, I'm begging you. Because it is your soul and salvation that is at stake. Remember, the Lord is coming. And the Lord is riding on his clouds of chariot. Are you going to be ready when the Lord comes? He's coming, and he's coming back for his church. Now, if you're not in a church, tell me, how would you be able to make heaven your home? Remember, neither is there salvation well in any other. For there is none of the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So if we're going to be saved, we got to go where his name is. We got to go into the church that where his saving power is. And I want to uh, put another scripture to him. Just before we read uh, Matthew chapter 11 and verse uh, 28 and 29, I want to go to another scripture before we read this. Because this is very very, very, very highly important. Because we need to know this. This is important. Jesus told us over this in the New Testament again. Over here in St. In St. John. St. John. 
Jesus told us, St. John 14, 6, that St. John chapter 14, 6, Jesus told us on him in St. John chapter 14 and verse number 6. Look what Jesus told us. Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now Jesus saying, no man come to the Father but by him. So the question now, who are you going to follow? Are you going to get the way it says, neither there's salvation in, 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 in any other name? Are you going to come and get in this name that where his saving power is? Is you going to come and get into the church that where you can be saved from your sin? Are you going to stay where you are? Are you going to stay where you are? Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the way. Now Jesus letting you know, I am the way. I'm the way for you now. You, I am the way. Now he's the way for you. Now if you don't get in his way, then something's going to be, there's going to be some trouble when he come riding on his cloud of chariot. Revelation told us in this day, when the Lord come, Riding on this cloud of chariot. Revelation tells us that men are going to go running to the hills and mountains. They're going to be saying to the hills and mountains, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that, that sit us up on the throne. But it's going to be too late. Why? Because when he told you in Acts 4 12, neither, I told you, you can't go nowhere else to get salvation. Neither. If there's salvation in any other, for there is none of the main under heaven among men given, whereby we must be saved. So if you want to be saved, you've got to come on and get in the church of Christ and learn how to run this race. Now, if you don't get in this church of Christ, there's no way that you can be in him. Because Jesus said, I am. He said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way. Look at Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth in the life. Now, if you get in his way, you can have the truth. If you get in his way, you can have the life. Jesus told us again. Jesus told us again in St. John. Okay, St. John uh, 17. 17. St. John 17, 17. Jesus said to sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Now Jesus told us that we have to sanctify you through the truth because his word is true. And his truth going to come from where this place that he said, neither there is salvation in, 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 in any of them. For there is none of the name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And in, in, in this place, he said that he's the way. He said he is the truth. He said he is the life. Now, if you don't get in his way, he said you're not going to, to his father. He said you're not going to his father. He said to sanctify them through our truth. Thy word is true. Read right here in St. John chapter 17, 17. St. John chapter 17, 17. We'll get to Matthew in a minute. We, we're going to get to Matthew in a minute. But let's look at this again. St. John 17, 17. Jesus told us this. He said, Sanctify them throughout truth. Thy word is true. Thy word is true. Christ's word is true. My friend, we're going to have to quit listening to what men say. And we're going to have to turn to the word of God. And we have to read the word of God. Why? Because Jesus said to sanctify them through thy truth. Why, Lord? He said, because my word is true. Now, remember, this lesson is the Lord is coming. And he's coming back for the church. 
He's riding on his cloud of chariot. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready when he comes? Are you going to be ready when he comes? Will your name be found in this book of life when he comes? Now, in order for your name to be found in this book of life, you got to come where it says, neither there's salvation in any other. You got to come to Christ's way. Because Jesus said, sanctify them throughout truth, thy word is true. And Jesus said, once you sanctify them throughout truth, let them know that I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, you ain't going to come to the Father. You ain't going to come to him. But by through Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't come through Jesus Christ, and you don't come Christ's way, it's no way. There's no way, my friend, you're going to make heaven your home. There's no way that you're going to make heaven your home. You must come into the church of Christ and get your sin washed away. You must come and go down into the water grave of baptism and get your sin washed away. You must come into Christ's name. Jesus said in the book of Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, I said also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon the rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus said that upon this rock he was going to build his church. And in this church, the gates of hell will not Prevail against it. Jesus says, I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and up on the rock, I will fill my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My friend, as we try to take our time and teach this lesson to you, you might have many questions concerning the church of Christ. So I hope that this lesson will encourage you to go and visit a church of Christ and sit down with them and question them concerning the teaching of the Lord. You can only get the true teaching from the church of Christ. You can't get it nowhere else. I'm sorry. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, no man come unto the Father but by him. So if you want the true way, you got to come the Christ's way. Matthew 16, 18. I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon the rock I will build my church. Now Jesus is the only one that built his church. Jesus is the only one that built his church. Since he's the only one that built his church, the church was where his name. As for prayer, neither does salvation in any other. For there is none other name well under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We must be saved. You have to come and get baptized in the church of Christ. Now, when you come and get baptized in the church of Christ, now we have many people that come running. Yes, they come. They come, yes, they go down into the water grave of baptism, get their sin washed away. But soon they get baptized, they take off, don't see them anymore. Well, you weren't ready to obey Christ the right way. Now, if you're ready to obey Christ the right way, you got to continue to come to his house and learn of his ways. You still got to come to his house and learn of his ways. You just been, you, just say you right now, you decide I'm ready to be baptized. I want to get my sin washed away. I'm ready to run this Christian race with the Lord. I'm ready to do this. And you do it. And so when you get baptized, then you leave out, go home, and you don't never come back. Well, you just did it in vain. Jesus 
told us, I'm trying to get here to the book of Matthew because, I mean, uh, St. John, uh, we're going to John. This next script in John, we, we, we try to get to is John. Chapter 3. That's St. John, chapter 3. That's the New Testament now. St. John, chapter 3. That's the one we're getting, we, we try to get to. Uh, we, we, we try to get there, okay? But right now, we were saying that there's something that when you get back, then you, then you don't come back. But see, Jesus told us, see, if something got to take place with it within you right now while we're talking about because you must realize that I want to be ready when the Lord come riding on this cloud of chariot. I want to be in the I want to be found in the church that teaching only the doctrine of Christ. See the book of uh, John, uh, uh, Second John one nine. He said, "Whosoever transgresses and bided not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God." So if you don't come and get in this doctrine of Christ, you don't have God. You can go to any church you want to, you don't have God. You can believe what you want to, you don't have God. Because the Bible said in 2 John 1 9, whosoever transgress, transgress simply meaning changing God's word around. Such people, some people said, man, you go to church of your choice and, and praise God anywhere. God hey, no, it don't work that way. The Bible said, whosoever transgress. And abide not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. Why? Because Jesus already told us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except he what? Come by me. Jesus said, now if you ain't going to come to his way through him, through him, you're not going to the Father. Then St. John 1 9, whosoever transgressed, somebody said, you ain't got to be in the church of Christ. They done changed it. They done changed it. Christ said, you got to be in him. Not they say you ain't got to be in. You can go to church of your charge and the Lord. No, it don't work that way. Neither is there salvation well in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men. Whereby we must be saved. Whereby we must be saved. So we want to make sure. We want to make sure that we are in the name the well the saving power is. We want to make sure we're in the name the where we can be saved. Now, Jesus said, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus said, I am the light. No man coming to the Father except to come by me. Jesus said, book of Matthew 16, 18, Jesus told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. And in the church, the one I'm going to build, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now you got to get in the church so that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The one that Christ died for. We're trying to get here to the book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 28. But right now, uh, Jesus said something else. I had a scripture that I'm going to pass my thought right now. But I want to bring this one in. Why are we here? I want to go to uh, St. John, chapter 5 and verse 39 before we move on. Uh, this, all this we're dealing with right now is coming from the New Testament. What we're talking about right now, everything we're talking about is coming from the, from the New Testament, okay? Um, let me St. John, chapter 5 and verse 39. The St. John, chapter 5 and verse number 39. Now, I'm begging you, if you have any question, if you have a question, each time you have a question, stop the DVD, write your question down, and mail them to us here at the Church of Christ at Eastside, 2518 Gallon Road here in Nashville, Tennessee, 37206. And ask your question. 
And we will get back with you as soon as we can. Or if you're in an area that there is a church of Christ close to you, go there and question them on the thing that you have heard on this lesson. Someone will be glad to sit down with you and show you what thus said the Lord. What thus said the Lord, according to the scripture. Now, Jesus told us right here, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Jesus told us right here in Matthew, uh, St. John, chapter 5, and verse 39. What did he tell us? Jesus told us to do this. This, this is all we can do in the Church of Christ. We, I'm, I'm telling you, we here at the Church of Christ at the East Side, we can't tell you about our feeling and our emotion. We can't tell you what we think about this and what, because what we think don't mean, don't mean a hill of beans. Now what we can do is tell you what the Bible says. And if, if we tell you what the scripture says, then it is up to you to listen to obey God's word for yourself. That's all we can do. I can't tell you what I think about Reverend Smith because Reverend Smith is not authorized by God to do the things he do. I can't agree with you what he say. He might quote some scripture from God's word. But the book of Romans chapter 3, 4 the Bible told us here in the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 4, the Bible said, Yea, let God be true, and every man a lie. Now, that's what God's word said. It said, Let every man, I don't care who he is, Reverend Smith, Father the Vine, or whoever, even if we got somebody in the church of Christ not going to stand up for, the, for, for God's word, the Bible said, Let that man be a lie. And let God's word be true. Let me say that again. The Bible says, I don't care if because we got some members in the church that want to change the doctrine of Christ and you can't change it. Because remember, 2 John 1 9 said, Whosoever transgress and abide and not in the doctrine. See, our doctrine comes from the Bible. The Church of Christ doctrine comes from the Bible. We can't go and add stuff to the body of Christ, we can't do that. In the worship service, we can't choose and pick what we want in the worship service. It is set by the scripture. That's why when you come to the church of Christ, we don't have the piano, we don't have the organ, we don't have the choir, because the Bible told us to speak to yourself in songs and hymns, singing and make it melody in your heart to the Lord. That's why. We sing the way that we do because this is the order by the Lord. Some may say, well, David played the organ. Well, yes, he did. David played all kinds of instrumental music, but we are in the New Testament teaching now. All of that's down, gone over with anymore. Christ has died on the cross of Calvary to save us from our sin. Now, this is what he told us to do now. Now, this is what the Jesus told us to do now. This is what we do right now here in the Church of Christ. What, are, what do we do? Jesus said in St. John 5, 39, Jesus told us to do this. What did you tell us to do, Lord? Y'all look at that. Look at the Bible. This is what Jesus told us, the members in the Church of Christ, to do. So when you talk to those that study in the Church of Christ and concern about your soul and salvation, some of them might be little. So let me say, you might get offended by some of them because they just, some of them, the folks said dogmatic, but now, in this day and time, you can't help but to uh, be, just, just going to tell the folk the truth. Let me say it again. Sometimes you're going to have to just go ahead and tell people the truth. If you don't get your soul and salvation right with Christ, you're going to be in trouble when he come riding on the cloud of the chariot. You're going to miss your home in heaven. Sometimes you just got to go on and tell the truth. If you don't do what the Lord said to do, you're going to lose your, your soul and salvation. You're going to find yourself in, that, in a place that is burning. If you don't get it right with the Lord. If we don't do what the, the Bible told us to do. See, this is so important. Because Jesus says this. Jesus said, such. Look at that word. So what is such? 
That meaning we got to look through, we seeking it out. Have you ever lost something in your house? Then what you have to do, you have to go look for it, try to find it, where it is. So what are you doing? You're searching, you're looking, ain't that right? So this is what Jesus told us to do. Now this is what we got to do with his word. We got to look through his word and make sure what we're saying, what we'll talk about, it is found in the scripture. So we're saying search. So what are you searching for? You need to take the Bible and search the Bible and see the church. The way you're going to is the found in the Bible. Now, if you do your searching and you can't find it there, then if I were you, if I were you, I will be removed from that place. I can't tell you. You have to do that for yourself. But I can plead with you to look in God's word and find. I tell you what, just before we finish reading this, because Jesus told us to such, ain't that right? We just said the word such. Okay, take a few moments out and search the scripture. And why are you searching the scripture, seeking you find the church of the Baptist in the Bible? Because men say I'm going to the Baptist church, seeking you find it in the Bible. Why are you searching, seeking you find the Roman Catholic in the Bible? Why? Because Jesus told us when he said such. So you got to search it. You better seek it out. You better seek and you find it in the Bible. You better look in God's word. Because Jesus told us that, that we have to sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Now Jesus said his word is true. Now if the word, gonna, now if Jesus wants you to go to a church, it must be found in his word. It must be found in his word. Let me say that again. And, okay, I hope this lesson to some that is not uh, hard to understand, I hope this. I hope and pray that this lesson will be so an even little child can be able to understand. Now, the only way that this lesson will be hard to you, and we'll look at a script in a minute, I'm going to tell you why it will be hard for you to not accept the Lord's way in a minute, if, if time permits. I'm going to show you from God's word if you fail to accept the God word, there's a reason why that you're not going to accept God word. You can go to all the churches you want to, but when you start, man, I just don't believe that. I don't believe them church of Christ all the time and they don't want to go to him. I don't believe that stuff. I, I can go to church in my church where well, you can. You can do what you want to do. But one day the Lord come and he's riding on his cloud of chariot. And when he comes, He's coming back for his church, the one that he died for. Now, he told us to, we got to search. You better search it out. <laughs> Man, brother, sister, my friend, family, neighbor, enemy, you better search it, search it out. You better search. You better look in God's word and search it out. See what the Lord said. You can't go on what you think is right and what you feel is right because we are feel and we think a lot of things. A man said, if I'm get drunk and I fall down and say, Lord, save me, he's going to save me. No, it ain't going to work that way. We got to what? Take God's word. Me and you, my friend. And we got to search it out. Like you lost your gold ring in your house. You went looking for it. You went searching for it. You went, you moved your couches. So in other words, you went and tried all of these different churches. You were searching for the truth. So you went searching, but you went all in the wrong place. But as soon as you picked the word up, God's word, then because Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth, you begin to pick the true word up. You begin to read the Bible. You begin to look in God's word. Then you begin to realize what Romans 3 and 4 said, yay, let God be true in every man alike. So you, you, then you came to the realization, I'm going to have to deny my mama, I'm going to have to deny my daddy, I'm going to have to deny my brother, I'm going to have to deny my sister, and I'm going to have to follow Christ because I'm searching out his way. And searching out his way, I realize I'm going to have to give up some things. Here, Jesus said, he said, search what, what we're searching now. 
He said, search the scripture. In other words, we've got to look into the book. We've got to look into the word. The one that Jesus said, neither their salvation, we searched the scripture, we found, he said, neither their salvation in any other. We're searching the scripture. He told us, we can't go nowhere else to get this salvation. In searching the scripture, we found out that Jesus said that I am the way, St. John chapter 14, 6. In searching the scripture, we find out Jesus said, say, Jesus said, uh, sanctify them through, I mean, search the scripture. Then Jesus said unto them, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word that you search the scripture. Okay, I got to go to St. John 14, 6. I just can't get this, I don't know what it said, I just can't get it out right. Let's look at it. We got the Bible, we can look at it. Make sure we get this right. Because it is your soul and salvation that is at stake. It is your soul and salvation that is at stake. And we're trying to give you the opportunity in teaching this lesson for you to decide within yourself, are you ready to step out of sin? Are you ready to change your life? Are you ready to turn your life over to the Lord? Are you ready to come to be a member of the Church of Christ? Are you ready, if you don't even come to be a member of the Church of Christ, are you ready to go to the Church of Christ and sit down and listen and learn more about the Church of Christ by coming to the by coming to their Bible class, by coming to the, the the Church of Christ service in the location of where you are? Go sit down and listen what's going on. And then if you don't understand anything, open your mouth and ask questions. Ask questions. So that you can be able to get your rightful answer concerning your own soul and salvation. And when you go, get your feelings out of the way. Get your emotion out of the way. Because see, uh, what happened to a lot of us? We know that we ought to obey the gospel of Christ. Okay, we know this. It's no question about it. Everyone that has heard anything about the church of Christ, deep down within their heart, if they be true to themselves, they know they need to obey Christ. But instead of doing what he told us to do, then we run somewhere else to try to, to uh, comfort us to go along with what we think and what we feel. See, the Lord ain't asking us about what we think and what we feel. He asks us to obey him and do what he said. Believe him. If you believe that it's right, obey it and do it. And forget about all this other stuff because it ain't going to matter on the day of judgment. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter. So if you die and you die in the battle, where well, it's too late now, it doesn't matter. You're going to, you're going to, when you come riding on the cloud of chariot and in the day of judgment and judge you on the thing that you've done, it ain't going to be nobody's fault but yours. Why? Because Jesus told you to what? Search the scripture. He told you to look for it, but you didn't. You went looking, but when you heard the truth, you denied it. You forgot about it. Okay. He said then, St. John uh, 14 said, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus said, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You ain't going to come to the Father but by me. So in order to come to the Lord, you have to come into his doctrine, his, his teaching. You got to come to his doctrine. To the teaching. Now let me explain about a doctrine. Yes, the Baptists have a doctrine. That's the Baptist doctrine. Is that like it is? They teach what they want you to know. They teach you the Baptist doctrine. No, it's not Christ's doctrine. Even though they say we're teaching you the Lord's way, it's not Christ's doctrine. Because the, the Bible said, whosoever abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. So where do we get his doctrine? We get his doctrine in the Church of Christ. Because Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So we have to sanctify you through thy truth. Well, how do you know it's the doctrine of Christ? Book of Romans 16, 16 said, to salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. So you have to be in the church of Christ if you want to get this doctrine. And this doctrine is simply teaching. And in this doctrine and in this teaching, we can't alter from it. We can't change from it. My brothers, brothers, my brothers, if I have some, we have brothers who maybe listen to the lesson and you have decided within yourself you want to say, change the order of God's service, 
and want to accept folks into the Church of Christ without being baptized, those people is not a member of the body of Christ. They are not a member of the body of Christ. You got to come to the water of grave of baptism and get baptized. Okay, you went over there to the bathroom, you got baptized over there in the, in the Baptist church. That you still got to come to the Lord and go down into the water of grave of baptism the right way according to the scripture. See, we can't alter from God's word. We got to stay just like it is. So we don't, I don't have time to go into a lot of other scriptures showing you uh, in the book of Acts about some, there were some men that they was under John the Baptist teaching under the time of John. They were under John teaching. But when they heard about Jesus, the rightful way, those men got baptized over again. See, so don't let nobody fool you. And if you are in the church of Christ and somebody came by and just shook your hand and said, we're going to give you the right hand of fellowship, you know, you better tell that man, look, don't lie to me. I want to go down into the water and get baptized the right way so I can be able to make heaven my home. So here, we're talking about Jesus told us to sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. So if you want to be in the kingdom of the Lord, you got to get baptized into the church of Christ and get your sin washed away. Now, Jesus told us here in St. John chapter 3, this is what I thought. St. John chapter 3, and we almost by ready. Excuse me, we almost by ready to bring this lesson ready unto a close. We almost by ready to bring this lesson to a close. Jesus told us right here in St. John chapter 3. Look what Jesus said. Now, remember, before we just said that, Acts 4 12, Jesus, the Bible doesn't know that there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And right here, Jesus let them know that, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He let them know that no man comes unto the Father except by him. And this way that he had, he had it in the church. According to Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said also in the deed that thou art people. And upon the rock, I will build my church. Then what are we to do? We are to search it out. We are to search it out. Find out what is the Lord saying in his word is right. Because Jesus said, search the scripture. Jesus told us we got to search the scripture. Find out about this name. Find out about this salvation. Find out about this way. Find out about this way. Find out about this church. Find out about this church. And how are we going to do it? We're going to go searching. We're going to go searching through his word. Because Jesus says, search what? The scripture. We'll forget about me. We'll forget about me. We're going to start searching the scripture, seeking out the way of love. So how do, are we going to search the scripture? By start picking it up and reading. So I'm saying, I want you all that after the lesson over with all these scriptures that are down here, you go back and continue, read them every day, over and over, and you'll see your understanding will begin to be opened up of God's word. This is what a, a, a Bible class, you know, sometimes we have a um, um, one-on-one Bible class, and you sit there and folk be asking questions, but after the Bible class is over with, then they forget all about the good stuff that we talked about. But then I'm so glad about this here. But you can go back and listen to it as many times you want to. And you can go back and study it many times you want to. It's still going to be the same. God's word ain't going to change. God's word ain't going to change. Now, look what Jesus tells us here. Now, if you want to be in this place where there's salvation in, in any other, there's none of the name on the heaven given 
I'm a man for why we must be saved. Now, if you want to be saved, then you got to come to the right place. And you got to come. And you got to get baptized. Now, this is why this baptism is so important right here. Because, now, if you don't come and get baptized in the church of Christ, let me say that again. If you don't come and accept, believe, if you don't believe God's word and you don't, but now, if you believe God's word, now, let me say this. If you believe God's word and you believe his word is right, then you'll be willing to do what he tell, tell us to do. Now, look what he said. You will put away your feeling of emotion. You will be willing to say, look, I'm going to quit fooling myself. I'm going to quit playing around. Okay, I've been a drunkard. I've been a thief. I've been a liar all of my life. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to do what the Lord said do. All right. You get up right now. You make that decision, and you go on and put forth that effort in doing what the Lord said do. But now, if you go and somebody is going to give you the right hand of fellowship and say you are part of this country, don't, don't let man fool you this way. Don't let him do this way. Because Jesus has some instruction for us. If you're going to be, if you want to be in the kingdom of the Lord, or you want to be in the church of Christ, not Baptist, not Matthew, not what Timbuktu, whatever. But if you want to be in the church of Christ, and you want to start living this Christian life, you want to be a Christian? I, 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 let me say it again. Because a lot of folks say, we, I'm a Christian. How can they be a Christian when you have not done what the Lord told you to do? So a lot of folks saying, I am a servant of the Lord. We're doing what the Lord said do. Praise God. Lord. Now, how can you be a Christian when you have, you have not done what the Lord told you to do? You might have got baptized uh, somewhere, but you wouldn't got wet. So we, don't, we ain't got time to go on it. But if you lack some more lesson on this, write them and let us know. We'll do a little lesson and send to you. Okay? But right now, we are trying to get you to just give you some idea of why you need to obey the, the gospel of Christ. I'm trying to get you ready that when the Lord comes riding on this cloud of cherry, y'all, that you will be found working in his church. You will be found being a member of his body because he's coming. Time is running out. He's coming and he's riding on this sweet cloud of cherry. Now, here we go. Now, look what Jesus said. St. John chapter 3 in verse 5. Uh, let me go back to verse number 4 here. St. John chapter 3 in verse number 4. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, Jesus answered, Very fairly, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if you don't be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The only way that you can become to be a member of the church of Christ, you got to be born again. What means being born again? Man, you got to go down into that water grave of baptism and get your sin washed away. Colossians uh, 2.12 said, it is a burial. And when we go down in this water grave of baptism, we've been buried with him. And when we've been buried with him, Colossians told us that it is an operation to take place in baptism. So how can some men come and change God's word around and try to get you right here in the fellowship and tell you you're going to be a member of the Lord's church and you hadn't done what Christ told you to do? How can they? Somebody done violated the word of God. Somebody have transgressed God's word. The Bible said, he that, now that's why we here, here in the church of Christ. That's why we here, we want to abide in his doctrine, just stay with it. So we know people get offended when they tell, tell them to God, but that's all right. We got to stay with it. He said, whosoever transgressed, in abiding not in the doctrine of Christ, that's not God. So we're going to stay right here in the doctrine of Christ. Because we're not going to, I want to abide in the doctrine of Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Tell you nothing, just tell you what the Lord said, and leave it like that. 
If you want to add something else to it, then that's your business. That's your business. But I'm going to leave God's word just like it is. Why? Because Jesus said for us to church Christ, to sanctify them through our truth, that word is true. All we can do is sanctify you through God, show you what God said through his word. Then once we show you what God said in the word, then we give you the chance to search it out. For you to go back and read over it. For you to go back and, and, and look God's word and see what God said. Man, I didn't know that. I didn't know that Jesus said, Jesus said, better, better, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I didn't know that. I didn't know how to get baptized in the church of Christ if I want to be in, the, in Christ's kingdom. I didn't know how to go get my sin washed away if I want to be in the kingdom of the Lord. I didn't know how to give up myself if I want to be in the kingdom of God. Now, this will bring us down to a very, very, very highly important thing. This right here. You can listen. You can listen to God's word all day long. But until you get ready to do what Christ tells us to do right here. Right here in the book of Matthew, New Testament. Now, you might have many questions in your mind. I don't know. You might be saying, man, I know I need to change my life, and I know I need to be a member of the Church of Christ, but I'm just not ready to do, give up these things that I'm doing. You know, some of us have lost many of our loved ones, and they have not been a member of the Lord Church. But yet they says, I'm ready for the Lord to come and take me home. Oh, what a sad day that will be when Jesus come riding on this sweet cloud of cherry yard and you're not found in the church. Men say that we'll see on the day of judgment, who will make heaven our home? We don't need to see. Because Jesus already said, if you're not in his kingdom, you're not going home with him. So there ain't nothing to see about it. Jesus done told us. So I said, well, I, I'm going to stay in the church I am. It doesn't matter. Well, that's your business. You can stay. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father, except to come. Jesus said, you ain't going nowhere. But the place he has appointed for you. Jesus said, no man going to the Father, except he come by me. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus told us that. Acts 4.12 told us, you don't have salvation in but one place. Because there's none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. God's word told us, 2 John 1, 9, Whosoever transgress and bideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. So my question is right now, why are we fooling ourselves that I'm going to serve God my way, you serve God your way, and there ain't but one way? Because he said, I'm the way. There but one way. He said, I'm on the rock, I build my church. Only one church. Only one church that where salvation can be found. Now, he told you, now, if you don't believe it, search the scripture for yourself. Jesus told you to search it. Find it in the Bible. Find it for yourself. You don't have to take what, what I say. Look it for you. Look it in there for yourself. Look for it for yourself. Find your church in the Bible. Look in it. Find it back to church in the Bible. Find the Jehovah Witness in the Bible. Find the seventh day of finish in the Bible. Find the Church of Christ, Light of Day Saints in the Bible. Find it. It got to be there. Because Jesus said to search the scripture. 
And he said, in the scripture, it sanctified them throughout truth. He said, it's in the scripture, the word of truth lies. In the Bible. Then if you can't find it, then why don't you come on and get in the church of Christ? And come on and get in the kingdom of the Lord. Come on and be born again so that you can be in the kingdom. Now, if you don't do this, you cannot be in the kingdom of the Lord. You cannot be in the kingdom of the Lord. Look, now, look what it says in verse number 6 here. Uh, Matthew, I mean, uh, St. John 3 and verse 6. That which is born of the spirit, I mean, that which is born of the flesh, is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. This is so important. Look what he says in verse number seven. This is so important to you. And this is so important for me. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Jesus, I'm telling you, you must be born again. How? By going into the water, getting your sin washed away. Now, I say it now. You might be struggling within yourself. Do I, do I really want to obey the church of Christ or not? There should not be any more struggling with, within yourself. But if there is, that's the reason why that you are having the struggle within yourself. That's the reason why you don't want to come out of the Church, you might be in. Or if you have not been baptized in the Lord Church, that's because you don't want to give up your lifestyle you live in. So you rather stay in sin, cussing, gambling, doing everything that God every day is frowning on. But let me tell you this. Judgment day is coming. The Lord is riding on his cloud of chariot. One day the trumpet is going to sound so loud in the heavenly sky. The angel is going to sound that mighty trumpet. It's going to sound so loud until it's going to wake up all the day. On that glorious day of the coming of the Lord, riding on the sweet cloud of chariot, men, women, boys and girls, the one that you call Reverend, the one that you call Father Divine, even the man that says he don't believe in God, but oh, on that glorious day of the coming of the Lord, men everywhere, they're going to get up and they're going to go run into the hills and mountains saying, follow us and hide us from the face of him. Why are they going to do this? Because when the Lord gave them a chance to do something, they didn't do it. Just like you have a chance right now, to do something. But you can, he ain't gonna make you do it. Because the Bible said uh, that uh, he that come after him, you know, uh, the Lord ain't gonna make you obey him. Whosoever will, let him come. Whosoever will, by your own free will, you come to the Lord. By your own free will, you ready to change your life. And when you, you and you truly do it, don't let me say it, you truly do it. Let me say it again. You truly do it. Because some folks come, they ain't truly done it. When you truly do something, I mean, you, you're ready to change it. You're ready, regardless of what going on, I'm going to change my life. Now, this is what. Try to get ready to close this lesson out. Jesus said it. So, this is what the problem is. When we get down to this part right here. Right here. When we get to this part, this is very highly important because Jesus got some instruction for me and you. Right here in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. He's going to give us the reason why we ain't going to come to him. 
See, Jesus already got it set up. He already know what you're going to do and what you ain't going to do. He already know all the questioning that you have in your mind. He already know all about it. He already know, are you going to be the one that willing to throw all that junk aside and do what he tell you to do or not? He already know you. He already know, but he's giving you the chance to do what he's going to tell you right here in the book of Matthew 16, 24. He's giving you the chance because he don't want you to be low. He wants you to come and be baptized in his kingdom and come into the church and start learning to live right. To come into the church and learn how to run. When you get into the church of Christ, then you can say you are a Christian. Then you, when you come to be a Christian, then you start learning to run this Christian race. You can't run a Christian race if you had not done what Christ said do. So a lot of folks say, man, I'm running this Christian race. How can you be running a Christian race and you have not done what he told you to do? Jesus said, uh, Jesus said unto him, except you be born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. How can you be doing what the Lord said do if you have not came into the kingdom of the Lord? The one he said, up on the rock, I'll be in my church. Where he said, neither there's salvation in any other. So how can you be sad? I'm on this race. I'm on this Christian road. Right here. This is why. This is why. Look what Jesus says here in Matthew 16, verse 24. This is your answer right here. So if you're struggling within yourself, and deep down in your heart, you know you need to change. Deep down in your heart, you know you need to give up this life. But there's something that you got to do. And if you're not willing to do this, I don't care everything we have talked about in this lesson, it, wouldn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because you're still going to believe the way you want to believe. You're still going to do the things that you want to do. So it doesn't matter what all we talk about. This was an exciting lesson to you. Maybe some made you, but if you don't do what the Lord told you to do, that's all it was. Just uh, looking at a movie, something on TV. That's all it was to you. But now if it meant something to you, or if it touched your heart, then you will be the one that's going to start seeking out the way of the Lord. Seeking the way of the Lord. Now if you truly want to seek the Lord way, the right way, then you're going to go ahead and do what he told you to do and continue to look through his word Seeking out this way. Look what Jesus said. Uh, 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So your answer is right there. So what will hinder you from obeying Christ? What will it be? The Denying part. Denying part. If you're ready to deny yourself, you will be the one to step out and say, I'm going to come on to the Lord. I'm going to change my way. You're going to deny yourself. But now, if you're not going to deny yourself, now I'm going to stay right here because I know uh, Reverend Timbuktu has been teaching me the way of the Lord all his life, and, and I know I'm going to heaven. My mom was in this place. Well, you can stay there because you are not ready to deny yourself. See, when it comes down to the truth and learning the Lord's way is a personal thing. It's personal to every individual. So that's why you have to take your eye off of mama. You have to take your eye off of daddy. You have to take your eye off of brother. You have to take your eye off of sister. And see, a lot of times we start looking at everybody else and we don't see self. So that's why Jesus said, if any man will come out for me, let him deny himself. Let you know it is a personal thing. You've got to do that. You've got to forget about what uh, Reverend Smith said, or uh, Father uh, Batelli Head said. See? Because they are not the way of the Lord. But now, if you think they're the way of the Lord, you can stay there. But according to Jesus, he said, he's the way. He's the truth. And he's the light. Now look what else Jesus told you to do. Now, if you're ready to deny yourself, you're ready to step out of the way of man, you're ready to go down into the water grave of baptism and get your sin washed away and come into the church of Christ and become a newborn babe and start learning to run this Christian race. Look what Jesus told us right here. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, in verse number 28 and 29. Look what Jesus says. Jesus says, come. 
So in other words, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do what the Lord told me to do. I'm going to deny myself and I'm going to come to Jesus because he said, I am the way. I know Jesus is, is, is the way for me. Here's to my truth. I want to be in his kingdom. So when he come riding on the cloud, a chariot, and when the question asked, are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? And if I come into the church and start learning to of the Lord way and living the right in the church, and when he come, I will be able to say, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to go back home with him. I'm ready to ride on this cloud, a chariot, and go back home in that sweet land, that sweet by and by. Now, one more thing while I'm here. And please, don't let anybody fool you that when you die, your Lord was gone on up to glory, sitting on the, no, ain't nobody gone on up to glory, sitting on the right hand of the Father. Only one did that was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But now, our loved one is laying in a cold ground. And I don't have time to go into none of this right now, but I want to finish this up right here. But when you die, there will be a separation of our body. Body, soul, and spirit. The body going to go back to the dust of the ground in which it came from. The spirit that God put in man, see, it's the spirit of in you. Like Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. The spirit telling your soul, deny yourself. The spirit telling you, deny yourself. Go ahead and obey the Lord. Go ahead and do what the Lord told you to do. The Spirit pleading with your soul to do what the Lord tells you to do. Now, it is the soul that the one that has to deny him, himself. The soul can, yes, Spirit, I'm going to hear you. Yes, I'm going to deny myself and go ahead and obey the Lord. The soul. But now, that soul got a decision. He can deny himself or he can stay where he at. And when the Lord comes, that soul going to have to give an answer. And why did he fail to hear that spirit? See, the spirit going to go back to God in which he came. The spirit going back home to the Lord. But the soul of man, which is you, you are still here. So where are you? You are laying in that cold ground in that heady world, waiting on the Lord come to judge you on the thing you've done in this life. And there are two places there. Well, three. One is known as paradise. The one in paradise are those that have served the Lord. That's why you have to come into the church of Christ and live right and do what the Lord said to do. They'd be resting over there in Abraham bosom. So when the Lord come back riding on his cloud, a sherry arm, they will be shouting, glory, 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 glory. The king is coming. The savior is coming to take me back home with him. See, but now, to those that fail to obey him, they're over there in Tartarus. Now this place is, if you read uh, the book of Luke, you'll find a rich man in Lazarus. Well, great. Tell me all about this. The rich man found himself down there in change. Was in torment. So, if you want to be in torment, you ain't having no trouble now. You die and, and, and die without, out, out, without the Lord in your life. This torment. You find yourself down there in change. But we, okay, let's, let's get back to where we at. I'm just trying to give you an idea so when people talk about they love us going on the glory, no, ain't nobody going on the glory. We just going down to the place of rest, waiting on the Lord come. It depends on how you die. Remember, as it is a point unto man, you saw in the beginning, talking about as it is a point unto man, wants to die, you saw the cemetery. They let you know we're going to die. There's folks out there laying in the cemetery. Now, how they raise up, the Lord got all that in his hand. But it says, Jesus said, come, so watch your life in this life. Jesus told you, he said, come unto me, all ye that have laden, 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus said, I want to give you rest. If your heart is heavy, you're ready to change, deny yourself. All you got to do right now, if you are the one that's going to have to deny yourself, and once you deny yourself, you got to be the one to be willing to say, I'm going to take up my cross and follow him. Jesus said, come unto me. Jesus wants you to come unto him. And if you come unto him, he will give you rest. My friend, and bringing this lesson to a close, this is your invitation for you to come unto the Lord. Are you going to be ready when the Lord comes? Are you going to be the one that's going to be willing to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Lord and Savior? Well, Jesus Christ, this is your invitation. Just to build an arm. Just to build an arm. Thirty cubits high. Thirty cubits high. Fifty cubits wide. Forty nights, oh Lord, I want it to stand, stand the test of time, oh, I know that God's on no one. Fire next time. 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 Fire next